So we're gonna make this lovely little mermaid skirt with princess seams, and this is gonna go and touch base on a lot of the different techniques that I went over uh, last week when we just talked about drafting techniques. It's obviously gonna go over adding flounce and fullness with our lovely little mermaid tail. It's gonna go over uh, seam manipulation, so we're gonna have to put these princess seams in. And since we have two darts in front and, uh, and not one, we're also gonna use a little bit of dart ma manipulation to cut that down to one dart uh, instead of those two darts. Uh, we're also gonna make a little waistband, um, so that's quick and easy, and we're gonna use some OptiText functions to do that. So um, again, just this lovely, uh, mermaid skirt, it's full length, so we're going to use the full length of the sloper. We have uh, the closure and a center back and center front on fold. So let's go ahead and uh, open up OptiTex. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is I actually want to do the flounce first. Now if I had an instance where um, I needed to shorten this, if this was not going to be a full length skirt, of course that would be the first thing that I'd do, um, is pretty much just crop away anything below where the skirt was intended to end. So if it ended at the knee, um, you could come down here. You might say, well, okay, how do I know where to crop it? Well, you can look at your measurement charts and there's lots of lengths, but just generally, if we take a look at, um, Here's the hip line. Okay, so that's where your full hip is. This is basically where the ankle is down here. Halfway in between hip and ankle is your knee, roughly. Halfway in between knee and hip is like mid thigh. That's like your short skirt, kind of mini skirt length. And then halfway between knee and ankle is like mid calf or like, you know, uh, that sort of length there. So that can kind of help you. So um, if I look here, um, remember our mermaid skirts um, need to be uh, broken a little bit above the knee. A lot of times people go too low with their mermaid break or basically when it starts to become full and stops being fitted. Um, and that creates a lot of walking ease. I have had more than one, probably several students think that they're making this fantastic mermaid gown, but they put the break way too low, either you know below the knee or, or somewhere like that. And as soon as they get it onto a model, they can't walk, they just stand there. They can maybe shuffle a couple inches at a time, but they really can't do anything. So remember that um, we always need for a mermaid cut to do that break above uh, the knee. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sort of align my pieces together. I'm gonna use the guidelines. I'm gonna clear them out so it's not so messy. So I can hide. Uh, I'm gonna delete all of them that I have so I can, I can basically toggle them on and off. But there we go, I've toggled them off so now a whole mess of them aren't going to show up uh, when I do this. And I'm gonna line my bottom just so I know they are aligned down here. So that's fantastic. And I'm pretty much going to measure up uh, or measure down um, uh, depending on where I want. So I, I wanna, what I wanna do is I wanna find a point between here and here that's halfway. So I at least know where my knees are. So I'm gonna add a point on contour. Come on, I clicked you, I swear. And hold down Alt so my measurement box pops up. And I'm not gonna do this measurementally up here, so I'm not gonna type in the absolute values, I'm gonna type in a proportionate value and stick it at um, one half. And that is gonna give me a nice idea of where my um, uh, uh, knee is going to be. So that's, that's representing half between the two grading points that it sits in between. So this distance and this distance are the same. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag down another guideline just to snap at that point so I know that's where my knee is. Now I'm gonna look for like a little bit above this. So I'm gonna drag down yet another one to place just sort of like right there, just above the knee. And that is where our break is going to be. So now I'm gonna zoom in. And I am going to cut along my guideline. So I'm gonna use my cut piece tool, keyboard shortcut C, 
or it'll be in your toolbox over here under build and cut. Do, do, do. And I'm just gonna cut right along using my guideline. I already have a guideline, so I don't have to really worry, but I'm just gonna take note of the numbers that I see here. So I put a point here, okay, okay. Um, but I'm really gonna look at my next point because that's the difference from here to here, which should start to you know be relevant also on this side it should be this number should be close to my previous point distance when i cut across i say okay i cut across all the way here all righty see what did i tell you okay now it's going to ask you whenever you finish a cut it always asks you if you want to seam it together or what the seam allowance is going to be for right now, we don't want to bother. Uh, we'll just apply seam allowance uh, all in one file swoop at the end. So I'm going to keep it at zero and hit OK, or you can just cancel out of it. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. All righty, OK, and boop, 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 right there, OK, and uh, OK. And now what I have done is cut off the area of the skirt that's going to be my flounce. And so, I don't need my guidelines anymore, so I'm gonna delete these guidelines. So it's a little cleaner. And I'm going to take these pieces, here's back skirt and back, so I know what's the front and the back, although these should be fairly simil similar. Um, and I'm gonna start doing my slash and spread on these guys. So um, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go ahead and cut this into thirds. I'm gonna cut each piece into thirds. So I'm gonna zoom in on my back piece first. And I'm gonna remember that this here, right, this line is my center back. So that's the one that's gonna be kept on grain. So let's zoom in, nice. And I'm gonna cut it into thirds. So when the measurement box pops up here, I am going to set this proportion to a third, which is 0.33 repeating. So that's one third distance of this total length. And I'm going to come down here. And since this is going to be, um, oh, that this point's going to mess that up. So I'm just going to try to do it pretty straight. Again, it just needs to be fairly straight. Okie doke. Okie doke. Now, so this measurement doesn't get messed up a little bit. I'm going to just delete that out there, but it shouldn't really harm it too much. Now, this is one third. What I would like is this is representative of two thirds of the remaining piece. So I need to cut it in half to get equal thirds for the whole, whole thing, whole shebang. Cut down fairly straight. All right, that looks okay. All right, I'll even it out a little bit. Boop, boop. Okay. All right, so now that we have our little, we've slashed, it's time to spread. Um, I'm gonna move the pieces out a little bit. What's nice about OptiText 2 is remember how in when uh, my explanations, uh, how it was really important to number your pieces. OptiText kind of automatically does that for you. As you can see, here's back skirt, back skirt two, back skirt three. Um, so we kind of already have this um, ordering uh, happening in our pieces all to, uh, already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rotate piece tool. And this is so, I, <laughs> right, I didn't get to slash and spread in uh, seemly too deep, but this is, this is actually so much easier. You guys would have so complicated to do this, this sort of rotating details in seemly. But um, we're going to use the rotate piece tool. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the point of rotation. So basically, this is the point that is going, it's going to rotate and pivot on. And uh, that's because it's going to match up here. So remember that we have to match all these points here. And again, if I'm going kind of quickly on the why I'm doing these things, that's because you didn't watch my other videos where I explained everything uh, to do with slash and spread. Um, uh, and I'm gonna, uh, and you know, how this works. So go back and watch those videos if what I'm doing doesn't make sense to you. Now I'm gonna set it at about 30 degree turn. 
And this is going to give us a sort of nice, as you saw, that, that skirt part was very full. So um, again, I'm going to keep this distance really nice and big to give us those nice full uh, drapes. And this was 30, so I want to keep it even. So that's 30 turns out to match this, and then another 60 to keep it even. Oop, did it pretty close. And we'll match that up to that point. So again, all of our points are matching. So this seam length, this overall seam length, where it's going to match up, um, uh, will be preserved. And put that in there. Now what I want to do is I basically want to trace all of these pieces because this entire area is going to become our flounce piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of them. Um, select one, hold shift, and select the other ones. Um, that allows you to do multiple selections as long as you're holding shift, most like everything else. Then I'm going to go to piece. And up here we have this option, let's go over here, uh, to protect. And we know a piece is protected because it gets these sort of slashed lines. Uh, it's gonna allow me to draft over it and keep this new draft as a separate piece and not just a line uh, that attaches to them. No, I don't run and remove the protection, I just added it. Now, uh, I'm gonna disable the measurement box for right now because I'm just going over what I've already done. I'm not making any measurements. I'm just basing this on what I've done. Now remember that to make curves, I hold down shift. And I'm just clicking on all of the points that I have in my template. So again, that's why I don't need measurements. So there is my draft piece, that's my flounce piece. I am just going to take the time to label it because once I get done with this, the back flounce is going to look an awful lot like the front flounce. So I just want to make sure I know what the difference is. And while we're here, I may as well correct the grain line as well. Remember, our grain line, even in our flounces, should go perpendicularly, I'm sorry, parallel to the center back, okay? They can also go along your side seam uh, too uh, in certain instances. Or you can have it as a bias. Well, there's lots of options, but let's just do it like this for now. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I don't need these guys anymore and they're cluttering up my workspace, so I'm going to delete them all. Bye-bye. Let's do the same thing for the front skirt. I'm gonna do it a little faster now because I don't need to explain because it's the, basically the same thing as we did before. Press Alt. Come on, do it. Why aren't you doing it? You know you want to. There you go. Woo. All right, one, two, three pieces. Let's rotate them. Now on this side, this is the center front over here, so this is the one. I'm going to basically be just rotating them out in a separate direction. Rotate piece tool, keyboard shortcut R, and I get it. There's equal flounce in the front as the back, so I'm going to keep the distance that I uh, rotate it out the same as I did on the back, so I have equal fullness in the front and the back. Now I'm rotating it in the opposite direction, so this is actually going to be in negative degrees this time. Okie dokie, let's protect it. Shift to multiple select. Go over to your piece, protect, and let's draft that front flounce. No. 
Any times it asks if you want to remove the or make a connection while you're drafting, just say no to all those dialog boxes, especially if you are using your template as a guide to create a new piece. Otherwise, you run into the issue of potentially not creating a new piece, just creating um, a line attached to your template pieces. that down there. All right, now let's head on up to our other pieces. Now what we have to do here is we have to do a princess seam. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of dart manipulation first. So what I want is I really want only one dart uh, in the front and back uh, skirt. So one dart in the back, one dart in the uh, front to be able to make my uh, princess seam. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll do the same thing on the front and back. Let's pop up. Come on. Come on. Whee. Let's do the back first. So remember, all we had to do is we had to calculate the total dart intake and then delete our darts, delete, 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 do not close, uh, and I'll show the difference between that, uh, and create a new dart that totals our, uh, equals our total dart intake. So this was easy, back is easy, it was one inch, one inch, so our total dart intake is two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click right on the tip of the dart. It's the only place you can really click on that will select the dart. So I can click here, I can click here, I can click all over, but only when you click on the tip will it select. Once it's selected, delete it. Delete it. Now that's what you want to do. I don't know why I jumped out like that, but that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and zoom back in. And the, again, the reason I want to do that and not close the dart, which would bring the dart legs together, is I still have this intake up here. I'm going to delete these dart points because I'm going to, uh, I don't need to delete them. I could just turn them off grading. So remember, we can right click, go to attributes, and just turn off their grading so we don't measure from them. And I'm going to put a new dart points on the contour that are going to represent where my new bigger dart is going to be. So um, I'm going to instead, I'm going to place it four inches from the waist, center it a little bit more. And then this one is going to be two inches from my previous point. Okay, so that's my new dart. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the dart in. One, two, and the depth remains the same. The depth remains the same. I think I don't, I don't know if I mentioned that in the other video, but your, your dart depth will remain the same. Okay, let's do it on the front. Now I also want to show you something, the, why I'm heavily emphasizing do not close your darts. It's actually probably not going to be a problem because it's really hard to close darts. It's not hard, but it's hard to find. So to close your darts, you go to tools. And sometimes you do want to do this, but in this instance, you do not. You go to tools, darts, close darts. This is the only place you can find it, okay? So I'm gonna show you what it does, okay? It does that, it squishes the dart closed, okay? It's still there, it just took away the dart intake. So this overall distance is now smaller. And the reason we do not want to do that is because if I did that and then added in the new dart, my overall waist length is going to be too small. So okay, what I'm going to do is let's just, um, oops, let's work clockwise and ungrade these guys. Actually, this guy really should be a curve point. Let's make him a curve point. Boop. Look at what it is, difference it makes. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm gonna keep the same dart uh, placement um, as the back. So again, now it's, I'm 
from the next because we work clockwise. So next point is four inches because that's what I did on the back. And, um, ooh, I want that to be grading. So let's make that grading. Oop. And uh, what I need to do is um, add the two dart intakes together. Um, so they were both five and an eighth inch. So that's 10 uh, eighths. Uh, which is one and a quarter. Uh, so that's what my new dart is going to be. Okay. And again, we'll put in that dart and the dart width remain or dart length remains the same. It's going to be that three and a half inches. There we go. All right. Let's finish this up. Uh, we have our dart manipulation done. It is time to cut out our seams. Now this is so easy, especially since this seam is, is fairly simple. It pretty much just goes from waist to hem. So I'm going to grab my cut piece tool and um, let's actually, let me zoom in on one piece. Let's do, you can do the front first. Why not? Let's do this, but I do want the whole piece and go back here to our cut piece. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut along the dart legs. So I'm gonna cut out the dart. Click at the tip, now click there. Don't need any seam allowance yet. Now I basically just cut out the dart shape and I can delete it. So it's truly negative space at this uh, point. One, two, three, okay. Now we kind of have these little dart remnants. Sometimes the dart kind of sticks around. So if you get like the, the thing there, uh, you can just delete them away because you don't need them. It'll just kind of make things a little bit confusing and um, uh, uh, messy. Okay, now super simple. I'm gonna cut from the dart tip Right on down to the hem. You can use guidelines for this. Actually, why not? Let's let's do a nice little guideline. It'll help us easy. I'm gonna drag it out here, and I'll drag one out here. And of course, remember that this line that I'm cutting can be any shape that you want it to uh, when you're doing a seam like this. Not when you're doing this project, because for this project, you need to copy what I'm doing. Um, but when you do your own draft and are making your own princess seams, you can make it jig jag or curve or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's all style. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. Now I have my back skirt here, which I am going to name more appropriately my center back skirt. And this is going to be now more appropriately my side back skirt. Again, all, oops, it's a typo. Skirk. Skirk. Um, always label your pattern pieces something that is easy. Oh, I already did that. Ha 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 is easy and clear, like front skirt one, front skirt two, or piece, 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 or draft, 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 are not good pattern piece names because it's not telling me what the piece is. So when we have clear names and clear labels, it dispels a lot of confusion as to what the pattern piece is. And remember, the whole goal of our pattern is to make it as clear and easy uh, to make and to read as possible. Because again, guys, you probably are not gonna be the ones creating your own garments. These are probably gonna be passed off to who knows where. Um, uh, seems like this is a little bit frozen. Okay, is it gonna unfreeze for me? I certainly hope so. Well, is that some seam alone? Oh, come on, don't freeze. Don't freeze, Optitex. Especially since I wasn't saving. So you guys, is the whole computer frozen? Oh no, I froze the computer. 
Oh no. Oh no. Oh, this is my computer. <laughs> what about this one? What about this one? Uh oh. All right, guys. Well, it kind of sucks because um, I didn't save, so I'm gonna have to do this all over again if I if if it does end up crashing. Um, but I'm gonna uh, uh, sign off uh, uh, right now. Oh, I don't. Oof, I really don't want to. I should have just been hitting that. Oh, it worked! It, okay, good, 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 good. It came back. So if that happens to you, just try to wait it out. Usually if it's going to crash, you get that little spinning wheel. So I had hope and I was right to hope. Okay, anywho, let's finish this off because we're almost done. Uh, I want to put some seam allowance on. So center back, if you remember the flat, it had a, um, a seam in the center back where we're going to put the zipper. So I'm going to get even seam allowance all the way around. So if you want it even all the way around, click on one point, click on it again. That tells OptiTech start here, go all the way around the figure, and then stop. I'm going to add half an inch seam allowance. I'm going to choose option two to miter it so we can keep the excess seam allowance out of our corners. Back skirt, also going to have seam allowance all the way around. Basically, we're gonna, all these pieces are going to have um, seam allowance all the way around. Except for my front skirt. My front skirt's going to be, or center front skirt is going to be on fold. So uh, what I'm going to do is this. Now this might look like I am putting it just on the center front, but I'm not because um, I'm going counterclockwise. So what this says is it's, it's not like this. What it says, says to OptiTex is, because remember, OptiTex only goes clockwise, is start here, travels clockwise around the figure, and ends right here, okay? So I click up here, and we get seam allowance everywhere but our on-fold line, and of course, on-fold lines never, ever have seam allowance. Now that's going to be the same as our flounces. The flounce, I'm not going to do a longer hem allowance. Why? Because it's flared. We never try, or, or we never try, we never do put a hem allowance typically more than a half an inch um, on any sort of flared hem because it'll start to bunch and kind of buckle and look weird when we do apply the hem. So we keep the hem as small as possible in those instances. Okay, let's add some uh, uh, pattern information. No pattern is complete without its pattern information, which will of course include a style number, a size, and cutting information. Let's say that the mermaid part is going to be out of a contrast fabric. So, there we go. And to make this go a little bit faster, obviously the size and style number are gonna remain the same. And really the cut information too. But I'm just going to quick throw this on the clipboard so it'll be a little bit easier for me in the next ones. Okie dokie. Now let's move up. Now most of these are going to be this, so let me just update that. And this is going to be one self. Right, that's on fold. Now we do need a nice little on fold label. So I'm going to continue on with my text tool and give ourselves on fold labels. Okie dokie. And here in the internal properties, and you can also right click on your text box and go to attributes to pop this up. To make it sort of um, stand upright, I'm going to set the angle of the text to 90 degrees. And then we can kind of adjust it onto the fold uh, just with the arrow key and the little boxes there. Now let's do that and 
do the same thing down here. Again, we can make that a little bit bigger. It's fairly well suited, but you know, nice clear on fold marker. Never hurt anybody. Oh, I'm so glad that I didn't have to redo this. But I'm so stupid because I still haven't saved. There, I just saved. I'm saving right now. Control S, guys, it'll save your life. Now, a um, couple other things. I'm pretty much done with this draft, um, except for, oh, the waistband. I forgot the waistband. Well, the waistband is super easy. But I'm also going to put in a couple other things. I'm going to put in um, uh, notches. Now, we would typically have notches along the uh, hip line to help us sort of stabilize and match up our cross grains. But there's already a line there, so I don't really need to do it. But the only thing I kind of want to do is um, add a notch uh, for um, zippers. So, oh, and maybe one on the flounce where this seam is going to go. Actually, that would be a good thing. So what I want to do is put a notch on this seam where the princess seam is going to hit. So I'm just going to take a quick measurement using the measurement tool of center front to princess seam. Now remember, it should be a little pretty close to four inches. 4.79. Okay. Um, because that's where our dart placement was. It, the reason it's not exactly four is because of the distance the dart is, the sort of shape that dart created. So what I want to do is I, I want to put um, a, a notch, using our add notch tool, um, that 4.79 inches from there. And this is going to be, of course, my next piece. Okay, and that's just going to help me align this piece with the flounce uh, when it's time. And I'm going to do the same thing on the back flounce. Let's measure what the distance between center back and the princess seam is here. It is five and a quarter. Okie dokie. Looking good. Now my last uh, uh, notch that I really want to do is gonna be along the center back just to show where the zipper is. So I'm gonna just put a notch. Remember it started up here at the waist and it goes down to the um, uh, full hip as it would need to. A lot of times it'll even sink a little bit below the full hip just to make it super easy to get on and off. Um, but that again is just going to indicate on the pattern where the uh, closure is. Now, um, if I were to be super thorough, let's be super thorough. I would also add a little zipper front just so there is no confusion on what that closure is going to be, what those notches meant. Um, and again, knowing where our closure is is always very important. So we're going to Scoot that back down there. Okie dokie. And let's. Oh, it got a little weird. I'm gonna, okay. So I'm gonna change, you can actually change the location in here as well, but it's done along the X and Y coordinates. So right now it's sitting at negative 42. I'm just gonna um, go into negative 40 and that'll let it sit in the piece a little bit better. Okay. Um, now let's make that waistband. And we'll be done, done, done. Now waistbands are super simple. Um, and they uh, can be made through the piece window. So we'll go to piece, new piece, create rectangular piece. Okay, so this is really all we need to do to draft the waistband. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna 
um, enter my full uh, waist length. So I'm actually looking back at the measurement chart and for the size eight, our full waist was 26 and a half. Now, remember, 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 and it was a long time ago, um, we added a quarter inch ease to both the front and the back waistline, okay? And that was in quarter, so that would be, um, uh, uh, we added that ease to the uh, waist arc, which represents a quarter. So in the front, we actually added a half inch of ease, um, a half inch of ease uh, to the total front waist and a half inch of ease to the total back waist. So that's an inch, a full inch of ease. So I'm going to add one inch, the 26 and a half inches uh, from our standard measurement chart, which of course will give us a length of 27 and a half inches. So that is our full waist length plus one half inch of ease that we incorporated into our sloper. Now the width is simply double the width that we want our waistband to be. So if you want one inch up and down, you make it two inches. If you wanna make it one and a half inches up and down, you make it three inches. If you wanna make it a half inch up and down, you make it one inch. Kind of get the pattern? Let's assume that was gonna be a one inch waistband, so I'll make it two inches and we say okay. And there is our waistband. Now this does not include any overlap. A lot of times waistbands will include a little bit of overlap. Uh, you can put a little hook and eye or a button or something like that to sort of smooth out the closure. I did not do that. It's not necessarily wrong. It's not necessarily that nice either. Um, pro probably adding a little bit of overlap would be nicer, but I'm gonna keep this draft super simple. This is a super simple draft, so I'm not gonna bother with any kind of overlap. All I'm gonna do is finish this off. I'm gonna give that waistband a half inch all the way around. The grain is fine, and I just want to name this, obviously, waistband. And we're gonna zoom in and, and give it a little bit of uh, text as well. All of our pattern pieces gotta be labeled. Do I still have it? Yeah, I do still have it, there we go. Of course, this would be cut one. Or maybe let's make this contrasting. It'll be cute, It'll give a little rhythm to it. Rhythm to the comp composition of the garment. There we go. All right, and then there we are. Just rotate so we have this all neat. You don't need to do this, but I kind of, I get a little crazy when it comes to organization. I also, if you, when you guys organize your pattern pieces, you know, something neat and clean like this, oh man, does it make it a lot more fun to grade, a lot easier to grade. I don't have to be going around and, and organizing them all for you. Hint, hint. <laughs> and there we are, that is our finished draft. Uh, uh, again, this gives us a nice side uh, princess seam, a waistband, a flounce, and just to sort of pick back, this is, if I cut this out and um, uh, sew it together, um, I will get this. This is what we just drafted. There's, remember, the zipper in back, there's our waistband, there's our one uh, princess seam going straight down to the hem, there's our, our full flounce right here. Um, so this is what we just drafted. And um, I'll write this up at an assignment, but this will be due next week. Got a little bit of catch up to do, especially since we got um, spring break coming up next week, but we still have class Monday and Tuesday next week. This will be due on Monday next week. If you have any trouble with OptiText or anything else, um, uh, please follow the link in the announcement. Um, and of course, if you probably, I would assume you still have uh, what you have uh, done for your skirt sloper. So again, uh, get that to me by the end of the week. Finish first up your skirt sloper. Send that to me. 
and then continue on to do your uh, uh, skirt flounce draft. What I'm going to do, guys, is I am going to put a size 8 sloper up on a blackboard. So um, you can compare your size 8 slopers to the standard. And you can also use my size 8 sloper to do this draft if you don't want to use your own. If you feel that yours is a little wonky, um, uh, uh, please do that. Uh, or if you want to get started on it, or if you lost your size 8 and uh, uh, sloper and want to get started on this draft, please do that. Please do not copy my size 8 sloper and hand it in as your size 8 sloper. Guys, I will absolutely know. It won't even be close to trying to trick me. It'll be so easy to tell. Trust me, don't do it. Please. <laughs> So that's what's gonna uh, I'm gonna do. So look up on Blackboard for a size eight sloper that you can use. It'll be the skirt. It might also be the shirt, but just ignore the sh the bodice for now. Um, just use the the skirt. Um, we'll save that, and I'm gonna sign off. Close down OptiTex. Sign off. There is it. Your options. Disconnect and log off. Bye bye, campus. This is the closest we're getting to campus this semester, guys. <laughs> and be safe, be healthy, be well. If you have any questions or anything, please email me. We are here and ready to help you. Uh, bye bye, and I'll see you Thursday.